Fox will start Curious, which I'm perfectly good with elevating here. I'm going to fall on the lateral aspect of that sarcoreus. I'm just going to hold my fingers mm -hmm. here. I'm going to spin the leg so that it's straight up and down now. Okay? And now I'm going to ask that to fold, and something will pop up right into your fingers. So here's sarcoreus. Mm -hmm. it. That would be and the then just lateral to that is going to be rectus. Mm -hmm. Okay? Such that if I pull, get that to pull his leg up with a slight bend. I can now walk my way down the rectus. Okay, so I'm just going to perfectly go and palpate my way down the rectus. You notice how his hands and fingertips never leave the tissue. So he's still oriented as he walks down. Lateral, medial, walk, medial, lateral, lateral, medial, all the way down. And once we get uh, distal here, getting closer to the patella, you're going to notice that this starts to become very, very connective tissue based. So it starts to become almost all white stuff. Okay? Right. So it a all super denser, patella pouch. A little thicker as you get close to the superior part of that patella. Okay? So from there, I can walk myself back up. And I should end up, if I'm correct, never leaving the tissue. Feeling with the pads the of the fingers. I end up on the same Going perpendicular to the fibers. That will be the rectus femoris. Now, from a tissue assessment perspective, pretty easy. So we know that it crosses the front side of the hip. I want to like almost feeling like your target is to get to the front part of the hip joint. Okay? And you will still feel dense connective tissue, which would be the deeper head of the rectus femoris. Not 100% palpable, which is why we don't talk about it, but that's where it is. Then coming off that deep part of the anterior chest. So when we think about the direction, first of all, the depth of the rectus femoris is very superficial. Just drop With as many fingers as I can, so I'm going to hover so you, this. So now that you've palpated rectus femoris, mm -hmm. you're going to be going parallel to the fibers with as many fingers as you can now as you get a broad base going down. Into extension. And you're going to stretch the tissue the looking for an adverse extension. mechanical okay. tension of so said fibers. So hip extension, the knee flex, simultaneous the knee flexion. Looking for non-uniformal tension within the bands the and fibers. And move the knee first and then the hip. No. It would be wrong. Okay? Move the knee first and then the hip. So you can decide. The order at which you move the knee extend the hip. or flex the knee. Does not, so necessarily, the necessarily matter. The order at which you extend the hip or flex the knee does not so necessarily move matter. Distal, I might move the knee first and then the hip. Maybe if I'm more proximal, I might move the hip and then the knee. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that it's not one than the other. The assessment zone is just how you think about creating length depending upon Following which the tissue, tissue you're trying to assess. Does everybody gather adding what length to, to the say? tissue that you're trying right. to assess? So there's no right way to do it. Just make as much 